you're going to have a tour, and this is a tour where you will be telling, you will be describing the artwork. And you'll spend a lot of time looking at all the details. Okay? Yeah. That's facts. And then you can imagine why the artist made it, what it means. And that's your imagination. You're free. There's no wrong answer. What it reminds you of, what it makes you feel. You will be saying when you think it was done, who did it and why. Okay? And then at the end, the uh, tour guide will tell you what facts they may know. Are you ready? Yes. yes. What do you see in this picture? Hush. It looks like those fire ropes that those firemen use to put down the fire. Okay. Yeah. It looks like um, sliced pickles and sliced tomatoes. <laughs> so, sliced pickles and tomato. Men working in factories. What does this picture remind you guys of? What does it make you think of? A ship? Or a train? know what that's during? Mm -hmm. The Great Depression, okay? Oh, yeah. So, why do you guys think the artist painted this? He was happy that he had a job. Yeah, but it wasn't one of the best jobs. To show that he was happy that he got money. What do you, what do you guys think the media was? Oil on canvas? Yeah. It looks like oil pastels. Oil me. pastels? Oh. Markers. Markers? Well, the medium was oil on board. The, the artist was Ralph Boyer. He worked for the Progressive Bridgeport Brass Company in the advertising department for 10 years. Bridgeport Brass hired murals to document the majesty and beauty of the metals. Boyer painted a WPA mural for the Westport Public Schools. A lot of these pictures in this gallery, the WPA gallery, are murals. Murals like a painting on a wall, so like it's like it takes up a whole like life. it's actually painted on, on the wall. Okay. Two years before Boyer was born, Edison invented the phonograph. Boyer died 53 years ago at age 79 before the invention of the modem, hula hoop, Barbie dolls, computers, barcodes, computer video games, and posters. <laughs> I think it's like because he's looking and he sees people doing work on this. So. Yeah. where there weren't really a lot of jobs. So when the artist was painting this, what do you think he was feeling or thinking of? They were happy to even have a job, but not happy that they had to work. And so it was hard to get a job. And even if you got a job like this, you were extremely happy so you could support your family. The people that didn't have jobs. These workers are very appreciative of what they have and they're happy. As you know, they're not taking it for granted. And there was war. War. And, like, it was really bad. They started making their own factories for making weapons. And that's how the economy boosted. And then there was only 1% of Americans did, didn't have a job. When we had our big fall, our depression, and the people were so poor and out of work and no money, then uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt set up the uh, Social Security system new deal and he also gave jobs to artists to make murals. <laughs> 
Father Della, who is the one responsible for all this. She is the uh, executive director of the museum, the Family Foundation, and Target are paying for your scholarship to come here. Yes. I hope you enjoy this exhibit. It's a special show. It's internationally renowned Cuban artists. So it's the only time that it will be in New England. And then it goes back to Cuba. So it's a rare chance for you to be able to see the work of these artists. Can you tell us how you got to Cuba? I had to go uh, through the auspices of, uh, of a church. Um, my visa had to be a humanitarian but artistic visa. This is the map. How many can find America on here on this display? Okay, and where is Florida? Okay, who can find Cuba? Cuba is the, the largest Caribbean island. These are the works that of artists that Ben Ortiz knows. He's met them, he's been in their studios. You look first, you learn the certain method, it's S E R T A N. So if you use the certain method, I'm certain you will give a good tour. Questions are the key to knowledge. We're more interested in your asking the questions than knowing the answers. What do you guys see in this picture? Eat. <laughs> Whoa. Tiny. What are you looking at that makes you think she walked a lot? Because you don't see her walking. When you say toenails, you know, you can be more specific Her about the state of the toes. So it's a little hard to look at, right? Yeah. Pearls here, I think that she was once a slave, and the pearls, like, resemble chains. I think the pearls represent that she is a woman of slavery or war, or something that, something that dragged her down. You can see a lot. Hmm? The ankles are kind of skinny, so it could be like a child. How old do you think the person is? I have another question for you. You just call them beads before we said pearls. Pe beads are different than pearls. Do you think they're real pearls? They're plastic because they're, they're string. They happen to be very inexpensive pearls that you picked up. He did not know this was a boy or a girl. They oh. couldn't tell by the ankle bracelet. <laughs> so Jake thinks that it's a girl. Yeah. A woman. It's a guy. Oh, it's a girl. Ooh. Hello. Maybe that's a girl's butt and that's a guy's butt. I think it's a girl. Explain, Joe. It's because of the bees. Men have wider feet. At the end, you're going to give your facts. So, Ben? Can I tell him? Yeah. This happens to be the artist's feet. These are the... Male. Male. Oh, boy. <laughs> Get at me. <laughs> what? Male, yes. And is that him too? And this is a self-portrait of the artist right here. Hmm. That's uh, Rene Peña, uh, and in which he photographs himself a lot. He took a picture of his own feet and he put pearls on them. So what is he trying to say? If you just saw him without the pearls, block the pearls, would you think that was a man or a woman? A man. Yeah, but then he puts the pearls on and we go, oh, then it's a woman. Must be a poor woman. So think of that, the power of the symbol of pearls. It makes us totally almost ignore the details we see with our eyes. Because it doesn't make you a woman if you wear pearls. I see a hand. She has a mask in her hand. The mask is gray. Good. Looks like she has no emotion right now. It looks like she's looking up to someone. Mm -hmm. It looks like she's in a dialogue. Since the background is black, it looks like her head and her hands are just suspended in midair. <laughs> if you look in her eyes, it looks like she was crying. What's the feeling you think the woman in the picture feels? It looks like she doesn't feel anything. Like women were supposed to take care of children and be like a housewife. And it looks like she's bored of her life. It's the same thing constantly. So these are all roles that she's playing. Mother, warrior, scholar. Then she takes off her mask. It's, that's beautiful. And it almost looks like the mask is kind of fake. Like, it's not real. It's like a drawing. Yeah, like a drawing kind of mask. She probably did this with, uh, with the computer. The, the images that you say it's a mask, uh, are the painted images were either cut out or glued onto the, the photographs. You all got it. See, just by looking, before we tell you, before Ben tells you, you got it just by looking. Great. It's really fascinating, right, because usually a factory is making objects. In this factory, the factory is making 
human-like objects. Often people who work in factory feel like we say a cog in the wheel, and I'm just part of the machinery. This particular artist is saying what their society is all about. You have to be all the same color, all the same shape, all the same size. From Columbus up to uh, 1898, Cuba, but Puerto Rico and other uh, Caribbean countries were dominated by uh, Spain. European explorers came to the islands and they saw how nice the natives were, the Tainino natives. They said, oh, they're very nice. They would make great servants. This interesting piece about the money, uh, Cuba has two systems of money. One is the Cuban peso, one is the cute. cute. Um, and the coot is for the tourists, the actual Cuban peso from 1933. But with the coot, you could buy anything and everything in, in the country. There's no McDonald's, there's no Burger King, there is no Kentucky Fried Chicken, no credit cards. You can't use a credit card in Cuba. Things that we take for granted. That yeah. Everything is given to them, medical, school, uh, college, everything, uh, clothing and all, but you know, you will get maybe one pair or two pairs of shoes a year. Um, when the Russians left, there was called the Dark Ages, where people were like really in, in really bad shape. They couldn't even get gas, oil to burn the cars. So when I went for the first time in 2005, uh, I was under the under Castro when he was in power. You, know, you could feel the, the, the tension and the, the cynicism and all that, all the things that, you know, people watching their back and everything else. That's a democracy where you are allowed to have freedom of speech. In the dictatorship, there is no freedom. Artists have this privilege, but also they have to be very careful. You can't blatantly uh, say something in your art because if not, they'll co confiscate the art. Yeah. Do, do we do more research on this? He's been in the war and now since he's finished with the war, he only sees pain and death and, and just war because of his sunglasses and how it has that camouflage for him. To the Ennis Lab, and so you were calling it a maze. And those are bigger companies. So that's the whole idea of bigger companies. We were talking before about capitalism. You might have a small business or the big companies are worldwide, right? Then you have those tiny little people. In communism, the people, as Ben was saying, are kind of like just all the same. And maybe in big capitalism, you know, the high big business, global business, maybe people are traded the same way. What do you think? Anybody have any uh, any opinion on that? That in a little bit of capitalism um, to take place, it helped. And now people are, have cell phones and computers. That this was before, uh, after uh, Fidel left. Now Raul was in power, so they were allowed. Mona Lisa symbol, an iconic symbol. What was your reaction towards that? You see how how global Nike is. Everyone, almost all the young folks in Cuba have Nike, Nike sneakers. How could they get it? Well, either through the black market or other ways that relatives would send them. Not unusual to have sneakers or products or t-shirts and all with this iconic image of, of American capitalism. so busy and everybody's uh, extremely busy having to go somewhere and get somewhere on time. Okay. Okay. Everybody's going somewhere. So it doesn't look like there's really fun yeah. going and everything's on. like blue and gray in the background. So what does that mean, like blue and gray? Those colors, when an artist uses those colors. Dull. Sadness. Maybe dull, sad, okay. Feeling blue. A lot of times blue can be a happy color, but in this case, maybe not so much. This vehicle was a, a public transportation called a camel. It was unbearable. I rode in one of them, and it's hot, no air conditioning, all the windows are open, people are they're like packed like sardines. How interesting, the Chinese have come and said, you help us to import from Cuba to China, and we will help you uh, get new buses. 
So you got new buses, air condition, proper lighting, and all, just heaven now. You can see how Cuba has gone global. It's constant, it's every day changing, changing every day, every day. And these artists are reflecting those changes in their art. And the literacy rate is like 90 something percent. And you get uh, free education from kindergarten all the way to, to college. There's certain things that you know, you, 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 when you're in that particular system is positive, and some of them are negatives. And any comments, any questions? You're very perceptive in terms of what, you, what you've seen, but also what you've expressed in each of the works. So I'm very, very impressed. You did a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ben, for talking to us. Congratulations. Great. Right, so we're going to go now to Cuba. Anybody want to go to Cuba with me? Who knows where Cuba is? together and take apart because they're probably going to take it apart and then wherever it goes they can put it back together. So he takes out the bolt and then he takes the suitcase off and he ships the knife and the suitcases as one. Wait, is this like an actual knife? Yeah, not like is actually. Like you can't like, really like Is this part sharp? Gigantic. No. Like if you this touch it you dull. would cut yourself. It's dull. I would cut myself? You would. Do you have so, any um, questions sharp. about this artwork? Yes. Why is the knife? Why is the knife? We just we just said that. In, in Cuba, you're not allowed to leave the country. What do you see, bro? Well, what do you see? Try to make something that somebody already did. What do you see? The same wind blows by everyone. We all have the same needs. Clean clothes. She is collected and exhibited in Cuba, North America, and Europe. What first? What do you see? On each side of the brain, there's. Do you see the stairs? This is like they're trying to get out. Walking away from the knees. I see something. I see that, um, I guess that maze sort of formed like a brain. Yes. And maybe these people are using their brain to get in and out of the maze. Whoa. Anyone else? What does it remind you of? Being trapped, like what you said, I was good. So how do you feel when you look at this? I think this is interesting because it's a Cuban art and they're not allowed to speak out and I think that they're, they're like keeping everything trapped in their mind. Because they're not allowed to speak at all, the government could be like, they don't have freedom of speech, like we have how we have in America. Basically, notice that there's no dead ends. That means like it's an easy way out, but yet they don't want to go out. They're Every scared. Yeah. If something could happen to them if they speak against the government. Which 
Okay. Sony. I see you. I see a maze. A maze? Okay. What, what, what do you see with your eyes? I see little people inside. And cars. And houses. And money. And airport. There's a... I got Well, in World War II, did they have Ikea, Nokia? Nokia is a phone company. We're going to ask you, what do you see with your eyes? A very curvy highlight. Okay, curvy highlight. Justin, I see like, cars that would be when you escort a president. The highways are being held up. What do you guys see in the picture? Ooh. In the future. What makes you think the future? Do you guys see like little things up there? Yeah, it looks like the moon. Like stars or planets. There's, There's like no color. You guys see this is not buildings, these are like gas tanks. Yeah. That is actually a gas tank. It's like everyone living inside a factory. Is there a way to get off of the highway on this picture? No. Yes. It's in Cuba, a lot of the artists. What they do is they paint, uh, they do paintings to represent their ideas, like their viewpoint or perspective. And uh, this is like his perspective, like he feels that the world is just yeah, becoming too mechanical. If you had to pick one door, which one would you want? If you had to that one in the middle. That one. Why? Actually, I love that. You look at the video and look at these little figures over here, everything's really dull. Like there's a picture over there, there's a lot of color, but this video is very dull. Now does that change your feelings about the video? Yeah. It makes them into standards. Okay, what does this remind you of right now? Well, we don't know. When you look at it and you see that there's no color, no expressions whatsoever, well, how does it make you feel? So, um, the artist was Fernando Rodriguez. These sculptures were made in 2006. It makes me feel. Okay. It makes me feel weird. Oh, now I get yeah. it. Oh. Uh, so okay. you want to get Nike shoes now? Okay. I A man with three years in the army. He looks serious. It just creeps me out that he has three years. <laughs> three years. How do you think he feels? Happy said. It makes me feel weird. Okay. Anyone else? It looks crazy. Why do you think their yes. frame would be made of like, garbage? Yes. It looks like um, that one is parents. What does that mean about Cuba? Look, see how there's two holes here, here and here? See, those? He drilled a hole there. Same thing in the middle of all those. Any country? They don't earn enough money. Drill, you drill the hole in the center of the one, like you did right here. Oh. Yeah. What does this make you guys feel like? How do you think the artist felt? It makes me feel like the guy had this need to show his feet. It's a guy's feet. Born in Cuba in 1975 and is 36 years old. Before I ask you, does that guy look 36 to you guys? No, no. he's 27. <laughs> no, he looks old, way older. Like 45, 70. These artists are living and working and creating art right now. This is temporary though, but then there'll be new artwork in here. Another exhibition will be coming. Who has a favorite piece from this exhibit that they saw? My favorite one is the garbage. The one with the garbage. We didn't really know what it means, but I thought it meant like you don't 
don't they have the sword that was like stabbed into the city yeah that's interesting it's like it means that like the cuban people um, don't have any privileges to like travel the guy, with three ears. the guy with three ears what do you think that was all about he can hear more than other people yeah in more ears you can he hear more right more what would you need to hear if you're a soldier commands commands the enemy. Okay, so who are you fighting and are they creeping around in the woods? You have to listen. <laughs> it's hard being a teacher, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's really hard work. So, what are some of the challenges? They said that she looks like a shoe. And I'm like, yeah. so, she yeah. looks like a shoe? Really? I think some the kids really enjoyed it, but sometimes it was hard to control them. Yeah. But they did enjoy the art, I think. Really was interesting in the art. Along with all the garbage and the forklift, they all mm -hmm. just wanted to like go run up and point it out to us. <coughs> need to tell us like what was in the picture and stuff and what they saw. Right? Okay. So you're calling on them, not picking on them. So we had a Spanish girl, she figured out the Spanish word at the bottom. Perfect. When we asked them how they felt, they didn't talk with them. When we told them there was no wrong answer, they started talking more. Perfect. Is everyone remembering that part to let them know that there is no wrong answer when it comes to their feelings, their imagination? Right with the, with the luggage, yeah. Yeah, they knew it right away. They were like, "Ooh, ooh I want to answer." It's this shows that you you can't travel Cuba right away. That was the first thing that they wanted to say. So they got it really quick. Yeah. Um, one of the girls from either third or fourth grade, she gave an unexpected answer because. Um, I asked her what does she think about it was on their feet and she said that she thinks it's a, a man because his wife passed away and that the, the pearls are all that's left of her wow. for him like that's the only thing that he has to remember her. Wow. People like kids are all like really surprised when we tell them that the that's the guy's feet on the opposite wall. They're all like and then they didn't believe that us. Like the first group that I had, they're thinking that there's a body in there and they're mad at them and stabbed them. <laughs> what? Wow, exactly. A girl actually thought that when the yellow thing was <laughs> when the yellow thing was like going in and out, that it was so oh. she said that reminded her of someone stabbing someone. It was like really deep. I was like, that's really deep. <laughs> Did you notice when you were walking from the other building that there's artwork on all of the walls everywhere? Yeah. Did you see that? This college houses one of the best museum collections for a community college in the entire United States. I want you to give your docents a big round of applause. They did a great job. actually see how hard it is. Eighth grade, uh, students explain it to them because it's like their peers telling them what they should be looking for or what they've discovered on their own. Yes, definitely history and learning about Cuba. I think it really brings the situation to life for them. And learning about their own history in Bridgeport um, with the WPA exhibit. It teaches them to look at art in different ways, to listen to other people's opinions. I think it's very helpful for students to actually voice what they've learned right after they've learned it. It helps to reinforce the memory. Instead of just being told what things mean. I think they've gotten a lot of confidence in uh, public speaking and 